The following may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Family attacked by deranged relative. A man is dead and two of his relatives are nursing injuries following an alleged knife attack by a disabled relative. The incident occurred about 2.15 a.m. on Wednesday at a house on Field Trace, Waterwheel Road in Diego Martin. The deceased has been identified as Michael Vialva. Police said Vialva's son was awakened by noises coming from his father's room, and upon checking, he saw a man he knows as a mental patient attacking Vialva with a knife. The suspect attacked Vialva's son, and when Vialva's stepdaughter reportedly entered the room, she was also attacked. The three victims were taken for medical attention at the St. James Medical Complex, where Vialva was pronounced dead. Vialva's son is still warded in serious condition. The suspect was arrested shortly after by members of the Special Patrol Unit. Cops suspect robbery as a motive for the homicide of Chinese businessmen. Preliminary investigations into the homicide of elderly brothers Michael and Mervyn Lee Soy have revealed that the possible motive may have been robbery. Police said that the suspects might have gained entry to their apartment through a small window on the northern side of the house leading into the bathroom, and the exit appeared to be via the same point of entry. An official report stated that at about 8.15 a.m. on Tuesday, first responders arrived at the house after a report of a suspected double homicide at Trinidad Ornamental Limited at 202 Eastern Main Road, Petit Bourg. Upon their arrival, the officers met with a staff member who reported that at about 8 a.m. he arrived for work and observed his co-workers outside the business and the main door locked. They informed him that they had been calling, as they usually do, for Michael to open up, but got no response. The staff member, being in possession of spare keys, opened the main door, allowed himself in, and started making checks for the brothers, when he discovered that the house was ransacked. The staff member then made further checks in a bedroom located on the northeastern side of the second floor of the two-story building, where he discovered the bodies of Michael and Mervyn. They were bound by their hands lying on the floor. The brothers, Chinese nationals ages 87 and 78, resided on the upper floor of their business, Trinidad Ornamental, a fabricating shop. Both the upper and lower floors were ransacked, police said, and a DVR from a camera security system was missing. Investigations are continuing. Teenager discovers grandmother brutally erased after returning home from school. Just over an hour before a 14-year-old schoolgirl walked into her home and found her grandmother deceased, Davy residents reported hearing two people fighting. Neighbors of Sita Jajisar, 63, said they saw a relative run to the gate of their Clarkia Drive Wellington Road home, screaming for help on Tuesday evening. Barrackpore police reported that they responded to a report of homicide around 3.45 p.m. on Tuesday. When the officers arrived, they saw Jajasar, a mother of three, lying on the floor in her living room with several chop wounds to her face. The schoolgirl told police she had just returned home from school and found her grandmother deceased. Detectives from the Homicide Bureau of Investigations Region 3 responded and interviewed several persons. And while investigators may have their theories on what happened, they have not yet established a motive or arrested anyone. Undertakers took Jajasar's body to the Forensic Science Center for an autopsy. Childhood friend grieves over death of Sita Jajasar. My heart just wanted to rip up. This was the reaction of Parandi Balchan, a childhood friend of Debi mother and grandmother, Sita Jajasar, 
whose body was discovered at her home on Tuesday. Jajasar, 62, a mother of four, was found unresponsive lying on her back with a wound to her head. One of Jajasar's daughters had picked up her child from school and returned to their home at Clarkia Drive, Serenity Heights, when they stumbled upon the body. Police suspect homicide but are awaiting the results of the autopsy, which is expected to be done this week at the Forensic Science Center in Federation Park. A neighbor who did not wish to be named said it was around 3.10 p.m. on Tuesday when he heard a noise at his gate. He said he looked out and saw one of Jajasar's daughters. She shook the gate and was asking for help. She said, come, come, somebody erased my mother. My son called the police, he said. The neighbor said he was shaken by the death of Jajasar, who was his neighbor for 22 years. It is a frightening thing. We will be uncomfortable for a while. She seemed a quiet person. She said hello and would give a wave. She never made trouble, he said. Balchan's childhood friend said she and Jajasar grew up together at Coconut Drive Cross Crossing San Fernando, and they remained lifelong friends. Last month, Jajasar visited Balchan at her home, and they shared a meal. She came to look for me and even brought food, she said. Let two of us eat. Everything was good. I am shocked to know what happened. I know she is a good person. I do not know who would do this to her, said her friend. Balchan said upon learning of the death of her friend, she burst into tears. I started to cry. I was in shock from the time I saw her name on the news. I said, no, this cannot happen to her. She was a good person. It is not to say she is doing wrong things why this happened. When I heard this on the news, I felt so sorry. My heart just wanted to rip up, she said. Sergeant Nanan, Corporal Ali, WPC Bahadur Singh, P.C. Gobin of the Barakpur Police Station, as well as detectives of the Homicide Bureau of Region 3, visited the scene. Crime expert Garvin Hera tells law enforcement to take control of crime. Given the latest crime statistics, security expert and former head of the National Operations Center, Garvin Hera, is advising law enforcement officers to send a clear and high-volume message by strong intel-led heavy operations to bring these activities under control. Hera explained on Wednesday that contrary to popular belief, the gangs in TNT are well-structured with a chain of command, almost mirroring a corporate arrangement. In addition, there is a culture and concept of transnational organized crime dictating the running of these enterprises. Therefore, there is always the quest and desire for competitive advantage and taking charge, Hera said. This desire would most of the times result in messages being sent via the portals of the underworld. Messages can be sent in the form of warrings, homicides, and by joint assemblies. Therefore, there is a strong possibility that there can be serious turf wars and intentions of assuming command and control, he added. Hera believes that what is needed is a concentrated effort by law enforcement that utilizes a joint approach of intel sharing and operations. Focus on the source of the conflict and have a zero tolerance to the surge of gang activity, he said. Law enforcement cannot be passive at this time, nor leave the gangs to fight and erase each other. There will be a need to infiltrate the intelligence system of the prisons and be guided by the ground and walls. It has been known that a lot of what takes place out in civil streets emanates out of gang control structures within the prison walls, Hira added.